I just want to ask you both what a performance tip would be, because this is a performance people podcast, what a performance tip would be from both of you as to how you can perform better every day. I've learned to also apply Susie's, um, Susie's mantra. Discipline is extremely important. But how my life has uh, come about is... Uh, I think there's a certain degree of drive that I had because of my difficult upbringing. But try to understand where you're really good in. And that means sp spend time thinking about, is there a skill, is there something in my character and personality that I think is superior to others? Because all of us have talents, w what, whatever they, that may be. And if there's something you're good in, you're going to enjoy Uh, to do that in your life and then go about it, do the best you can, learn, try to develop every single day um, and be a better better person tomorrow in that respect and and do it all with a certain degree of easiness. It's going to be all okay and pan out if you have found something that that you're good at, whatever that is. Well, I always go by the mantra that, and this is maybe to take the pressure off myself because I'm someone that, that puts myself under a lot of pressure. I can only be the best version of myself. And that's all I can, can aim to be every day. And, and sometimes that's good enough and other days I fall short. But uh, like Toto mentioned before, I'm, I'm someone that's rigorous on discipline. Um, you know, set yourself up to be successful by putting yourself in the best position, being disciplined as to how you live your life and, and bring your best self to the table. And You know, a lot of, of, of young people say to me, oh, what's the most important um, thing I need for, to be successful in this sport? And I always say, it's resilience. Don't give up. There will be tough days. There will always be tough days, but you've just got to, to keep going. I mean, you two both have very strong personalities um, and, you know, in your, in your own way, you're huge performance people, which is the title of this podcast. So who, who makes the decisions in the Wolf household? I think, I mean, that's first of all a great story. From my perspective, <laughs> we definitely share the decisions. I think we always set the priorities so we know what we, oh, no? No, you take the decisions. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, well, you leave me the, the kind of the easy stuff, uh, which gives me the, the, the wins to kind of um, uh, satisfy my uh, ego in the marriage. And then the real direction <laughs> is happening in the background. And you do that. Yeah, I would definitely say part of my role in the marriage is logistics manager. So I have total schedule in my phone and I'm the one kind of trying to keep everything up in the background that everything functions. Um, but my perception is that we kind of share it yeah. because in the end, we always have, let's say, the priorities and we are on the same track. And in a way, we we make it work. I mean, even when the decisions are difficult for one and not for the other, we always find a compromise. Yeah, so it's true. She's the... COO, um, and uh, which is good because we are also so complementary as uh, with our characters. I'm a little bit uh, all over the place, creative, and I like to um, think about you know where is this all heading, what is our strategy, and and Susie just um, uh, needs to then execute because sometimes um, uh, that is uh, you know you need you need both. You need a plan, but you also need the execution. And Toto did once liken yeah. me to a donkey. He's the Arab racehorse that when he comes <laughs> out of the pen, he goes and he's a very, very high performer. And I am a donkey. And don't underestimate donkeys because they never give up. They always keep going. And that's me. I didn't say you're a donkey. You know, there is this um, horses, uh, work horses in Austria, um, halflinger. They're on the mountains. Oh they go God. They with this, you know, with these legs, furry legs, and they go and go. And, um, and so she keeps that going. But once you... <laughs> I'm pretty nervous, but once you get me in this starting box and you close it behind me, I run. And very but, fast. Well, you say that, but I run fast. This, that you, seems like the most... That is a, that is a brutal, brutal um, breakdown of how you two operate. Honestly, if you ever compare me to a donkey, we are in really hey, big trouble. Don't diss the donkey. They get there in the end. Exactly. exactly. She's super supportive because it's 23 races this year. It's going to be 24 
uh, next year we're trying to keep a certain normality in our schedule. Uh, we, we travel together. I try to have the motorhome wherever I am or the same hotel room to every place I go. I have my traveling assistant, Hannah and Julia, that come with me, the same driver at every location. Um, I eat the same food for breakfast, lunch and dinner. I never change it um, wherever I am. And uh, this gives me a certain frame or a certain stability um, that wherever I am becomes actually re less relevant because the setup is landing, car and driver, hotel, to the track. Um, sometimes it's just a jet lag that is something you need to cope with. But definitely it's, it's all about coming home at the er earliest after the debriefing on Sunday. I'm really looking forward to see Susie. Um, and and the kids, there's nothing better than than coming home. Are you are you similar in your approach to leadership? And and Toto, I know you have this um, this uh, uh, culture which is blame the process, not the person. Is is that is that? Are you both alike in your thinking with regards to that, or do you differ in your management styles and your leadership styles? I mean, I'm interested to hear your answer. What I would say is, when I started in in Formula E. As much as I'd learned from Toto, I also knew that I was going to have to stand on my own two feet, that I was my own person. And I definitely, having watched Toto, believe a lot in authenticity. You have to be yourself. And clearly, I'm not Toto. I am myself. So I think I definitely have a, a different style. I also think being a woman in the role in such a male-dominated environment means that in certain areas, I am very different. Um, and quite interesting. A lot of in what way? Me, what, would you, what way would you say that women bring something different to that role? There's a couple of times where, where I've been on, on video conferences and Toto's been in the background and he's come to me afterwards and said, you were so hard in that meeting. You know, you, were, you had real... And I said to him, sometimes I need to be so hard because I sometimes as a woman surrounded by men to get that respect. And, and don't get me wrong, it's never in a disrespectful way that I'm hard, but I need to sometimes be very clear on what I'm, my expectations are and what's what's gone right and what's not gone, gone right. Um, and maybe he's he has a different style in that sense. But for me, in order to make sure that, let's say, the team functions as I wanted, I, I definitely had to show a harder side. Um, but the communication I definitely learned, being being open, always making sure there was no politics in the team and making sure everybody was always working towards the same goal. I think the fundamentals were were similar, but because of our characters, the the way we manage is different. And a couple of times when we came to very difficult situations at the beginning in the team, kind of sometimes people said, well, let's just, you know, you can ask your husband. And I said, no, you know, I've, I've got to take these decisions myself and I've also got to fail. I've also got to take the wrong decisions and know what failure is like, because I think failure is a, an important part of, of success as well. So you need to find out for yourself, uh, who am I? How, how do I do that? And I think whether you're hard or you're soft, whether you manage with empathy uh, or less, um, that becomes irrelevant as long as you understand what do I need to achieve with this organization? What do I want to achieve? And, um, and, and obviously, so everybody's different. For those that might not know, for the last year or so, we've been working with the America's Cup team, Toto, with your team up in Brackley. And I, I've got to say, it's been incredible seeing how the F1 team operates. You know, we've come from a background of, you know, circa 100 people in America's Cup team and you have you know, just two, already 2,000 people at the Brackley site and many more with the engine manufacturing site. But the attention to detail and the process that, processes that you put in place you know, are way and above anything I've seen in, in, in our world of America's Cup. And so it's, like I say, it's been a fascinating process. Like what sort of thing? What sort of thing do you mean that's different? Well, you know, like Toto's saying, you know, the structure of the meetings and the way that people are encouraged to take some leadership I think you call it leadership by intent Toto may, maybe touch on that that's been a really fascinating process for us to go through there's a Spice Girl song um, that has this sentence tell me really really tell me what you really really want and it is what you need to say as a leader and what your leaders should say to their people it is what is it that we want to achieve what's the objective and I leave it to you because you're, you're the expert to deliver your part and deliver deliver uh, uh, to the to the overall objective. And if you if you can kind of buy into this, um, people feel empowered. Um, 
people are in a safer place, uh, you can have tough conversations that we call tough love. And it's very important to remind people or, or also about that. With those uh, conversations that we, are, we have different perspectives or um, perceptions. And it can be quite intense. And then what I try to do is, is to say, this is exactly the tough love comment. We share, are, are we in agreement that we share the same objective? Yes, we are. So youth coming from that way, and that is your perception that it's the right thing to do to achieve the objective. And then you have the other person with a different opinion. So what is it, where do we differ? And if you're able to, to come together with, with, an, with a compromise, or with, an, with an agreement, or you um, agree to disagree, I think that that is managing um, by intent. This is basically uh, the, the, the general that gives the intent to his lieutenants and to the officers that fight on the ground and they always know in which direction or what the overall strategy is that we want to, or the overall objective we want to achieve.